Good evening, and thank you for tuning in today to our episode or our hotline show, um, Political Forum. I'm your host, Dartesia Pitts. I'm a board member of Can TV. This is Political Forum for Wednesday, April 23rd, 2014. We welcome today as our guest, Alderman Sawyer of the Sixth Ward. Thank you for appearing on Political Forum, thank Alderman. It's my pleasure. As you know, every Wednesday, CAN TV brings you this live interactive program that allows you to engage with your elected officials. We welcome your questions and comments. Please give us a call. Call Alderman Sawyer at the number that you see at the bottom of your screen, 312-738-1060. During the next 25 minutes, we'll try to get as many of your calls answered as possible. Well, Alderman, thank you again for um, appearing on the show. I was running in here at the last minute, and we had an opportunity to kind of chat prior to the show beginning. Um, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Certainly. I am a lifelong resident of the Sixth Ward. I attended school at Howleton Day School Grammar School, which was a all-black private school on 46 in Dearborn. Then I went to St. Ignatius College Prep, I attended uh, DePaul University where I got my bachelor's in finance and went to law school at Chicago Kent College of Law uh, where I got my Juris Doctorate in 1990 and I've uh, been a practicing lawyer for the last 24 years. Okay. Can you tell the audience where exactly are the boundaries for the Sixth Ward? Certainly. Roughly we're dealing, and I'll deal with the new map since that's the one coming up. We go north, as far north as 66th Street, far south as 87th to the east, Cottage Grove, and varying degrees to the west, we go as far west as Bishop. So it's uh, encompassing the communities of Chatham, Park Manor, and Inglewood. Okay, I'm gonna show the audience just so they can see. Yes. This is, is this the map of the new ward? That's the new ward. Okay, and that goes into effect in 2015? 2015. 2015, that's correct. All right, so there's a lot going on in the city right now. I'm sure we can just pull, you know, grab, reach in and grab a topic. Um, but let's start off with um, pensions. Can you tell the audience what's going on with pensions as it relates to the city? It's a very difficult situation we're dealing with right now. There is a pension obligation for certain number of uh, pensions, in particular police, fire, and Chicago Public Schools. Police and fire, we have an obligation to pay $600 million next year. We also have the municipal and laborers pensions that were uh, they have been negotiated but not signed by the governor yet. So, and that would require some increases in property taxes, uh, some substantial increases. So, it's quite a daunting task to be in the council at this time because, in addition to us uh, being asked to raise property taxes, we're all running. All fifty of us and the mayor are running for re-election. So we have to ha balance the the issues of being fiscally responsible to make sure that we do the best for our constituents and at the same time protect those pensions that we were required to pay into but for various reasons we did not over the last several years so we have to make up those payments we have to make sure that the the obligations of the pensioners are kept and at the same time be fiscally responsible to other 99 percent of the other residents who are not city employees that have to contribute to this so we have to balance that act, and it's it's quite difficult. That sounds like a daunting task for yes, the is. council. If you're just tuning in, um, I'm Dartesia Pitts. I am sitting here with Alderman Roderick Sawyer of the Sixth Ward. I encourage you to call us at the number that you see at the bottom of your screen and ask the alderman some questions. Engage him in conversation. We do have a caller. Hi, caller. Hi, how are you? Good. Oh. Yes, I'm a six ward resident, and I am just appalled at how dirty the shopping uh, lot is around 87 and Cottage Grove. Mm -hmm. It's like they have so much money coming from our community to them, and yet they can't even clean up the lot. And I was wondering, is the alderman aware of this, and what is it that you can do to help them? That's a good question, and I am aware of the lot, and we have informed the owner of the, of the shopping center, 
who was Crown Properties about the condition of the lot on several occasions. Uh, but the problem is, just like I cannot come on clean up at your house, it's difficult for me to come and clean up at somebody else's property. But we do make it known. Uh, we do issue citations and tickets. And I've had several conversations with the uh, owner. We talk quite regularly about this because I'm concerned about it just like you. I drive by there on a daily basis. And we want to make sure that that, that mall stays clean. They have the Nike store there, Target, several other stores there where they make a lot of money. And we think that they make enough money where they can hire people to make sure that those uh, properties stay clear. So I'm concerned just like you are. I, I drive by it probably as much as you do. And uh, we are aware and we continue to deal with the, the owners there. Okay, thank you, caller. We have another caller. Hello. Uh, yes, I, I wanted to make a couple of points, if I might. One with regard to this pension obligation question. And I, I would add that in addition to what the alderman said, that. Part of the problem is that, uh, to be quite frank, a great many politicians at the local and county and state level wanted to get elected, wanted the backing of unions, and were therefore willing to make exorbitant promises that, frankly, we didn't keep down the road. And the reality is that, you know, we need to start talking about how we're going to solve this problem by everyone having to meet somewhere in the middle, because the reality is no Chicago city taxpayers, neither the payers of Cook County nor the state of Illinois, can meet that obligation simply by being taxed more in order to fulfill promises that were made decades ago by people trying to get elected. It is also the case that the people who are entitled to these pensions need to recognize that some of those promises cannot be met to the same degree that they would want them met, simply because the money isn't there. And as he, the alderman pointed out, it would be unfair to say to taxpayers, Somebody that got elected 20 years ago made these promises and now and didn't bother to meet those obligations over the years, so now you're going to be asked to pay an exorbitant amount of money. And not to mention that taxing people at some point drives business out and drives people out. And there are other states where they will go if we raise the taxes. And, again, this is an issue that's statewide, countywide, and citywide. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Carla, for giving your, us your input on the pensions. Um, do you have a ward night that the community can come in, come out to talk to you, or what's your policy as far as seeing the constituents? My policy is I have a community that, that's unique in that each one of my neighborhoods have active community organizations. And what I do instead of having my own ward night, I appear at each one of my community organizations' monthly meetings. Okay. I have about six different uh, community organizations that have monthly meetings, and I attend each one of those. So if you're in Chatham, I go to either the Chatham uh, Avalon Community Council meetings or the Greater Chatham Alliance. If you're in Park Manor, for example, I go to the Park Manor Neighbors. And I, uh, or if you're in Inglewood, I go to the Resident Association of Greater Inglewood or RAGE. Uh, I make sure that I uh, avail myself at these meetings and I answer questions and interact with people as opposed to me having a meeting saying how great I think I am I want to make sure that I, I meet people where they should be. So when people call my office and they say, well, I live in Park Manor, I encourage them to go, for example, to the Park Manor Neighbors meeting. Okay, so if you want to give the alderman a call and discover or find out what meeting you can attend, you can reach him at 773-635-0006. That's correct. All right. There is um, something going on with the privatization of a transparency ordinance. Would you like to inform the audience about that? Certainly. Almost two years ago, during budget negotiations, I had under uh, heard that the city was about to lay off some water management employees in the building collection system. And most of those employees were either African American or Hispanic. And I was outraged. I mean, one, that we did not know about it until after the fact. This was already occurring. So we were sitting around talking about what can we do to stop this kind of activity from going on in the future. Mm -hmm. Because it was appalling that elected officials had no knowledge that this uh, area is about to be privatized. What adds insult to injury that it was going to be privatized by a company out of state in Pittsburgh whose home offices were in, uh, across the ocean in Japan. Wow. And all of this to save less than $100,000. So we we're going to put 26 people out on the street to save less than $100,000. And I just thought it was outrageous. So I got together with several uh, other people, and we prepared an ordinance that simply says, if you're going to privatize a service or an asset, 
that you have a hearing about it and we let the public uh, be aware of it. We have to have a cost benefit analysis to make sure that we are in fact doing the right thing when we privatize a service or an asset. And we want to make sure that this going forward, the people are aware that whenever this thing, these types of things happen, we say that we're going to save this kind of money, we're going to keep these types of jobs in the community because once you start privatizing assets and reducing salaries and reducing benefits, it devastates our communities and it happens to be the black and brown communities that get affected the most. So I'm happy to say that I'm the sponsor of this ordinance. Unfortunately, right now it's bottled up in the Rules Committee, but I'm confident that it will be uh, pulled out and we have a fair hearing on it. And I believe that the my, my colleagues in the City Council will pass this because it's a common sense initiative that just says that we need to have an open, honest dialogue before we, in fact, privatize something in the city. I think that is um, great. <clears throat> and that would, if we would have had something like this in place prior to the meters, would that have... The meters would not, that deal would not have been approved. That, okay. Not at all. Got it. That's that's an excellent um, ordinance, and hopefully it will definitely pass soon. We have another caller. Hi, caller. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Uh, how are you doing today, Alderman? Oh, fine, sir. How are you? Good, good. I just had a question. Um, is there any way we can get more for patrolling police officers in the neighborhood? Good question. Actually, we have gotten more foot patrols on 79th and 71st. We've uh, they just started our bike patrol. We're one of the target areas to get bike patrols, so I'm happy about that. Uh, we can always use more, obviously, but I'm happy that we were one of the uh, wards that were targeted to get additional foot patrol and bike patrol. So I'm happy that you mentioned that. And in addition to that, we also have some private security in the form of an SSA that patrols uh, portions of 87th, 79th, and 75th Street, which is getting us some added police protection. So I'm really happy about that. We have another caller. Hi, um, thank you for taking my call. Uh, I just wanted to piggyback off that last question. Um, and I guess I'm curious to sort of get your critique on the job you think the superintendent is doing in terms of controlling crime. I've read some reports that say that, you know, we have experienced a significant drop in violent crime thanks to the work of Superintendent McCarthy. I've read other reports that say the complete opposite, that crime is just as high as it's been, and he has been, you know, jiggering the numbers and misclassifying crime for the sake of it appearing to go down. And I'm not really sure sort of what to think. So as an auditor being on the front lines, how would you say things? going? Personally, I have a, a, a good working relationship with Superintendent McCarthy. Uh, he has been responsive. I know the job is very difficult and as it relates to the numbers, I'm going to wait to see how that plays out to see what the real numbers are and I'm hoping that we get an independent audit about that to make sure that the numbers are what they're supposed to be. But uh, as it relates to my re relationship with uh, Superintendent McCarthy, it's, it's a positive relationship. Uh, I have talked to him on numerous occasions about concerns I have in my community, and he has been responsive, although I was a little bit upset when he moved one of our commanders, uh, Glenn Evans, who was a, a top-notch commander in the 3rd District, but we did get a very good commander in his replacement, and he's working well together with us, so right now I'm it's a work in progress, and I'm hoping that it will continue to be a positive re working relationship. Thank you, caller. Well, we just got over a really brutal winter. Yes, <laughs> um, the polar vortex did us all in, and it also did our streets in. Oh, yes. What is going on with the city and their plans to um, fill these potholes? The potholes are a tremendous problem. It's the, right now might be the number one call I get in the office. I'm encouraging all that are listening here today and all throughout the city of Chicago, not just in the sixth ward, but everywhere, Please, if you have potholes in your block, in your neighborhood, call them into 311. I know people don't like calling 311, but this is what we've been given. And the city has actually been fairly responsive with the requests in the system in 311. And they'd like to get them all closed out. So if you please take that time, take a few minutes of your day, call those potholes into 311 so that we can get numbers for them and we can see the calls in. I was at a meeting at CDOT uh, recently a few weeks ago, and I was a little bit dismayed because I was not getting the number of calls that I was expecting to get in my community where I knew there were potholes located. We try to call them in as best we can, but 
I need the people that live on those blocks that that see them more than I do, that hit them more than I do, uh, to call those in, to make sure that we get them in so that when we see the requests, they do respond to the requests. And that's how this administration chooses to respond. And they want to make sure that they're in the system. So please call them in the 311 so that we can get them addressed as fast as we can. All right. Because, yeah. I think I've lost. I've seen people lose cars. And oh, those yeah. Because yeah. I've seen sinkholes. <laughs> where, yeah, it's gotten that bad. It's gotten bad. One other thing I, I might say about the potholes, though. Uh, we had a gentleman come out, a, a group come out recently, last week to be exact. Uh, and they had an alternative way to deal with potholes. Uh, it's part, it's a hot patch system as opposed to the cold patch system you've been hearing about that we've been using lately. And the problem with the cold patch system is that it pops back out. You know, in the weather we've had, the hot, the cold, you know, it's below zero one day, it's 40 the next day, it's 15 below the next day. And the expansion and the contraction of the road, the cold patch system, the, the asphalt pops out sometimes and we have to come back and refill those potholes time and time again. This pellet patch system, which is a recycled rubber, so it's also good for the environment, right. um, costs slightly more, but in the long-range effect, it reduces our man hours because you only have to do it once. Once it's done, it's done, and it's not popping back out. Mm -hmm. So I'm encouraged to see systems like that, hopefully, that we can use in, in the future with the city of Chicago. Okay, good deal. And it's good for the environment. Yes. We have another caller. Yes, good evening. Good, good evening. evening. I have a question concerning the uh, parking meter seal. Uh, it seems that City Council will soon vote uh, to no longer have uh, free Sunday parking in certain neighborhoods in Chicago. Now, this was supposed to be a nice carrot for residents like me, uh, and it looks like now that that's going away, and what's stopping other communities from doing the exact same thing and getting rid of Sunday free parking for the entire uh, area of Chicago? It's just it's rather frustrating. Thank you. I, I still have free Sundays in my ward. Uh, I know the people that that chose to rescind the free Sundays have active Sunday shopping districts. And their problem was, and I was talking to them, their rationale was that once people get into those spots, they stay there. So it prohibits those shoppers from coming in and getting an opportunity to park there, to buy things and to leave. Uh, and that's what they wanted people to do. They said the argument was people park there Saturday night and don't leave until Monday, as opposed to people coming, paying for an hour or two, shopping or eating and dining, and then leaving so someone else can come and shop and do the same thing. It was affecting their, their merchants' bottom line. So they chose to rescind those, uh, in those areas, they chose to rescind the free Sundays. And it was their decision to make, and they felt that it was in the best interest of their communities to do so. So I just it's really about the location, where you are in the yes. city as it relates You know, to near North, Lincoln Park, the areas that had active shopping districts, they actually mm -hmm. wanted to rescind it because it affected their retailers' bottom lines. Now, this may this is a little off topic, but That's not true. really. Um I noticed that they the, the the cost of the meters they go up. Yes, they do. Okay. <laughs> so and it has. You know, different areas of course, different amounts. Mm -hmm. How often will that happen? Do you know, or do we know? It's part of the agreement where they go up annually. Um, and the thing that frustrates me about this, uh, we could have done the same thing. Mm -hmm. We could have made arrangements and, and kept the meters, hired maybe a management company and paid mm -hmm. them a percentage and got new meters, got, you know, invested in new technology, which that's what all they did, mm -hmm. and raised the rates. I mean, our rates were... In some areas, ridiculously low, um, though I thought they were fair on the south and, you know, on the neighborhood sides. Mm -hmm. You know, they were like a quarter an hour or something like that. Right. Now they're, and even in the neighborhoods, they're $2, Two an hour now. plus. Yeah. Cheap, right. That's the cheapest. Uh, and that's the cheapest. And like I say, downtown is just, you might as well pull, pull in the parking lot. So uh, it is frustrating, but I'm hoping that, I know there's some lawsuits out there pending. I don't know what's going to be the outcome of them, but. Mm -hmm. We, sh I mean, it's too late to say now we've got 71 more years to deal with the parking meter, at <laughs> least that we have. Yeah. You know, if there was a way that we can get out of it, I would love to uh, hear about it and hopefully that we could. But right now we're stuck with it and we're just trying to do the best we can with what we have. So we will have to deal with those annual increases. Yes, for just for 71 more years. Right, so. 71 <laughs> more years. Everybody's going to be on a bike. Right. <laughs> um, 
you can you tell us a little bit? I know that there the council is divided or has several different caucuses within the city council, mm -hmm. and you are active with the Progressive Caucus. Yes, I am. Can you let the audience know what exactly the Progress Progressive Caucus is? Certainly. The Progressive Caucus is a group of eight aldermen right now. We're hoping that that number grows, but right now it's eight of us that are, are like thinking in the, in the terms of we're looking for a more responsive government. We're looking for an open, honest dialogue. Uh, we're just trying to make sure that our neighborhoods are protected, not at the expense of, of investing in downtown. We need more investment in all, all of our individual neighborhoods. We want fair allocation of resources. We would like to see open and honest government, um, a fairer government that, that respects all areas of the city, not just the, the interest of, of the money, where the money is, which is primarily downtown. So we deal with a lot of progressive initiatives, uh, again, like for, from the privatization to fair wages, to earn sick time, things that we think that are appropriate in this day and age that we should be dealing with. And quite honestly, that to the great degree that we're not. So I'm, I'm happy to be a member of the Progressive Caucus. It's a great group of people that, that, are, that are very active in wanting to make sure the city does better and proud to be a member. Okay. And um, we just passed this season, property tax season. March 1st is the favorite mm -hmm. um, time of the year besides April 15th for a lot of people. <laughs> That's right. Um, but I know the second installment is coming up at the end of the summer, beginning of the fall. What's going on with the property taxes in the city of Chicago? Well, going back, tying this to the pension obligations that we have, uh, and I just had an opportunity to meet with uh, Governor Quinn and talking about this obligation. I believe there are things that we can do that will lessen the, ob the, the burden of, of relying upon property taxes, and it's something that I think that the governor is going to initiate, and I, I'm hoping that members of the city council will listen to. For example, we need to close corporate loopholes. There are several, you know, there are several corporations, multinational, billion dollar corporations that do business here in Illinois that pay zero state income tax. None. So if you're out there working and you're earning a salary and you know you just passed April 15th, you have to pay your taxes, you are paying more state income tax than larger corporations. I, I'm not going to sit here and name individual corporations, but there are a lot of them out there that are paying no income tax whatsoever. So if we can allocate those resources better and do things as it relates to the tax structure, we can generate to, to individual cities like Chicago hundreds of millions of dollars potentially that will come back here. And as a member of the Progressive Caucus, going forward with that, there are other initiatives that we can do that will lessen the burden of, of relying upon property taxes whether it's commuter taxes, whether it's expansion of sales taxes to services. Uh, you know, you go to the cleaners, you don't pay sales tax. You know, that's archaic. That's just, that's 19th century thinking. You know, we're in the 21st century now. We need to start expanding the tax base. Hopefully then if we expand the tax base, we can reduce the obligation. More people will pay a fair share and we can stop relying upon property taxes for everything that comes forward in the city of Chicago when we need some money, we can always go to the property taxes. That seems to be the argument, and we need to stop doing that. Yeah, that income tax situation is um, <laughs> for multi-billion dollar, multinational corporations. That yeah. makes no sense. None whatsoever. Um, well, we are almost done with the show. Is there anything else you would like to let your constituents or the viewers know? Well, just in closing, I, I just want to make sure that we are, uh, pr particularly those members of the Progressive Caucus and all the city aldermen, and I believe this, that we're trying to do everything that we can to make sure that we're, we're improving the quality of life for the citizens of Chicago. Uh, I'm trying to do that for my ward, and I think everyone else is trying to do that for theirs. Sometimes we have difference of opinions on how we get that done. Uh, that's why I decided to join the Progressive Caucus. I thought that they had ideas that I thought that were in line with my ideas, independent thinking, uh, not relying upon old methods of doing things, but at the same time using what we have as, as a strength you know, in numbers, even though our numbers are small, but we, we speak loudly and, and, and we make sense, and I like to think. So I just want to make sure that we're, we're doing what's necessary uh, for the city of Chicago in general and in my ward, the sixth ward in particular, to do what's necessary to represent the people. I try to stand up for them as much as I can. 
and uh, continue to do good work. All right. Well, thank you again, Alderman mm -hmm. Sawyer, for appearing on CAN TV, our show, Political Forum. Thank you, viewers, for your calls and for you tuning in. Our telephone technician, thank you, Steve. You've been great. Um, Political Forum is brought to you as a community service by CAN TV. Please join us again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. I'm Dartesia. This is Alderman Sawyer. Have a great night. Thank you.